You laughed at the way I moved around You said my feet never hit the ground I look away but then I couldn't move basic elements, winning and losing, colour and movement and mindless violence. And we hope to incorporate all five elements in the show. One winning, every night, every Friday night, we're going to have some of the biggest names in Australian sport on this show with their cliches down and their souls bared. Two, losing. Well, that's where I come in and in fact everyone who works on this show. You see, we are wimps, we are losers, we are failures, we are no hopers, we are no good at sport and we're not ashamed to admit it. Like, I know that sports shows are traditionally presented by large ex-champions with designer moustaches and fat, unpleasant bodies crammed into stupid blazers, but we're a bit different. I mean, I know, I know sports shows are always presented by the kind of people who can't wait for a break in play so that they can talk endlessly about how good they were 20 years ago, but that's not us. I mean, for a start, most of the people that work on this show are women, and uh, my urine sample is back from the lab, so no one's too sure about me. And also, as I say, none of us have ever been champions or ever will, and we're not afraid to admit that we're losers. We are not ashamed to say that when World Vision wants to make a cheap documentary about suffering in the third world, that we are the sort of people they will cast as extras. That's okay. Because, and this is the secret, ladies and gentlemen, 50% of any competitors in any given sport are losers. And so it's time there was a show on Australian television which said, it's okay to lose. It's okay to be hopeless. It's not my fault that I'm built like this. It's not my fault my parents put me on shrinking steroids when I'm a kid, is it? I'm not embarrassed to say that the worst injury I've ever had is plaque, are you? Because I know that inside this sickly white body, there's a six foot seven black athlete with attitude called Leroy trying to get out. The awful thing is that some Sometimes he does, which is pretty hard to explain at my Christian science classes. <laughs> so that's winning and losing. Three, colour. Well, look at this set. Isn't it extraordinary? I mean, look at those colours. Actually, it's bloody awful. Who designed this? Someone on acid? I apologise for the way this looks. If you're at home right now trying to adjust the colour on your TV to get a decent picture, it's all our problem. Do not adjust your set. We will adjust ours. Can we sack our designer? No, we can't sack him at the ABC. Can we promote him? Good, we can promote him. So that's colour. What else was there? Movement, that's right. What we want to do on this show is move Australians closer together. Bring wimps in contact with champs. Bring wankers in contact with thinkers. Bring losers in contact with posers. Movement, that's what sport is all about, isn't it? Bringing people closer together so they can hit each other. And that brings me on to item five, mindless violence. There'll be a lot of that in this show, far too much as a matter of fact. And as an example of that, our main guest tonight, our surprise guest, not a surprise anymore, Rex the Moose Mossop, who'll be discussing a topic of his choosing, AFL. Is it a pain in the 
the half game for pussy or not? Meantime, let's get into the hot sporting issue of the 90s, foot hygiene. <laughs> I mean, these do look stunning. I would actually wear these to any formal do myself. Yes. Oh, well, thank you for Something seldom attempted on Australian television. We are going to have a rock and roll band not miming. That's right, this band is more live than Lazarus after Jesus dropped in. Will you please welcome <laughs> Spy vs. <versus> Spy? <laughs> I'd like to introduce you to Debbie Spillane! Oh. Now, for those of you not familiar with this stunning redhead, in fact, her nickname is Scalabras, Debbie Spillane is a journalist, a sports journalist and commentator whose particular interest is the mind games that sportsmen and women play, the ploys of the week, if you like. Debbie, what were they? Well, first up, I think we should take a look at what was the most spectacular ploy of the week. It came from the one-day international final one between Australia and the West Indies. It's coming here any moment now. Here we go. It's Alan Border taking what they call a free hit for six off the bowling of Phil Simmons. 
Much to the disgust of uh, opposing captain Vivian Richards. We'll see, Alan was just doing his job, which is scoring runs for Australia. Viv's problem is his bowlers are trying to do the same job. They were scoring runs for Australia as well. <laughs> I think it was uh, 11 wides and 14 no balls. Really? In fact, I haven't seen so much overstepping of the mark and uh, so much lack of direction since your last series ended. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Gee, this will be the shortest lived career I've ever seen on the ABC. <laughs> Oh, there's been a few. Overuse of the uh, rugby league interchange bench was probably the most unpopular ploy of the week. Now, Australian Rules has had uh, an interchange bench for some time, of course, but it's a new uh, innovation in rugby league. And uh, new innovation, I think that's in Rex's class for tautology, Well, you can it? talk to him about it yes, later oh. on. You can talk to him verbally with your mouth, yes. Okay, well, we will do that. Well, as I said, Aussie Rules has had this interchange bench arrangement for some time, but it's new in rugby league, and the coaches were acting like kids with a new toy. They just totally overused it, but nevertheless, I like it. I mean, I, I think it doesn't matter if the scrums become sort of a 12-man progressive barn dance. We can live with that. Um, but the most intriguing ploy of the week uh, is Aussie golfer Ken Trimble has decided to hire a Dutch baroness as his caddy for the Catalan Open in Spain this weekend. Now, um, I don't know much about the lady except that she's been described as sturdy. Sturdy? <laughs> sturdy, yeah. And I, I'd really hope that she was especially old as well because then we could describe her as both royal and ancient and that'd be nice. Royal and ancient. Sounds more like Zsa Gabor to me, actually. <laughs> Thank you, David. We'll chat to you a bit later in the show, but let's now cross to ABC Sports' Karen Tai for the latest sports news over at the Norma May Memorial Eyeball. Thanks, Andrew. Good evening, everyone. In Rugby League, Newcastle and Penrith have finished 18 all in tonight's fixture at Penrith Park. Newcastle led 12-8 at half-time. Penrith replied with two second-half tries to lead 18-12 before the Knights tied matters up eight minutes before time via centre Jeff Doyle. Touched by Smith. Broker. That's a try! Oh, miracle try! It was... <laughs> So Newcastle yet to beat the Panthers, they drew last season also. The 1991 Aussie Rules season kicked off tonight with the competition's new team Adelaide hosting Hawthorne at Football Park. And at the present, Adelaide are giving the Hawks a hiding. At half time, it was Adelaide 11-6 to Hawthorne's 3-3 and we'll update that score later in the show. In the semi-finals of the Australian Basketball Classic at Sydney State Sports Centre, the Sydney Kings have made their first Classic final, defeating Hobart 104-89, to with the Kings' two recruits leading the scoring. But with the good news has come the bad, star American player Steve Carfino today was ruled out for the whole of the season with a back injury. Now the Kings have to find a replacement with the season proper coming up in just two weeks' time. And the second semi-final is still in progress. The latest score we had was Brisbane 33 three leading east side 26 and heavy rain has prevented any play on the opening day of the Sheffield Shield final between Victoria and New South Wales at the MCG the final have however will still be played over five days with officials deciding to extend the match to Wednesday that's it for now I'll be back later in the show with some more sports updates that's a bit sad about uh, Steve Carfino Poor old Steve Carpino missing a year with a back injury. It could be worse though. I mean, Bill Hayden missed an entire career with a back injury. It was just stabbed. <laughs> horrible, horrible stuff. Well, let's now go back to the streets. Sport, sport, sport. But hey, there's some people up here. Let's talk to these people up here. G'day, how are you? Good, how are you? No, I'm very well, thank you. What's this? Travelers Japanese? Travelers Japanese, learning. Learning. Yeah. Hey, Daddy. What's that? Right, right. Yes. left. <laughs> Do you know the Japanese for sport? Masugu. <laughs> Masugu? Is that Masugu. Is that Japanese for sport? Yes. It? Do you play sport? Very little. What do you play? <laughs> um, water skiing. Water skiing? Tennis or water sports. Yeah. yeah. You can water ski. That's amazing. Barefoot. Doesn't that hurt? No. Tickles. Oh. <laughs> oh, uh, can we just uh, see this here for a minute? Now, when you water ski bare foot, doesn't this rip the, uh, the soles off the feet? I've actually tried my watch. Remember the old Seiko commercial? Yeah. The bottom it, it's worked. <laughs> Singapore special and it's worked water skiing. Oh, God, this is amazing. The actually, order. I, if you see here, if you're coming very close, there's actually uh, some athlete's foot 
just a little bit of a fatal infection there. And uh, I think you'll find that, uh, like, what, you're in your 20s now? Yeah, so when you're in your 30s, I think you'll find this, the whole bottom of your foot will start to drop off. But I wouldn't worry Get about green. that if I were you. Pardon? Okay, green. Yeah, possibly. How about you? Are you a like that? Oh, yeah. that's gorgeous. Yeah, okay. We'll, we'll just keep that in here. Oh, it's <laughs> Sorry, I that's didn't realise anyone was watching. Yeah. I'm happy she wasn't bigger. Really? Why? It's big and meaty. You like men who are big and meaty? Yeah. All right, then see you later, Lisa. <laughs> but Andrew, there's more. There's... I never did find out what more is. Our first guest on our first live in Sweaty is currently ranked 20th in the world in the women's marathon event. Her name is Tani Ruckel, and if that doesn't ring a bell, you may remember her famous finish at last year's Commonwealth Games when she won the silver medal in the marathon. <clears throat> Would you please welcome Tani Ruckel? Tani, that's a pretty spectacular finish, but it was all just for effect, wasn't it? Oh, yes, of course. We rehearsed that for quite some time. Yeah. In fact, that took longer rehearsing than the actual preparation for the marathon. That's probably why you won the silver, actually, Tani. Yeah, well, exactly. I know. I should have spent more time working on the running. Actually, it's pretty impressive. Have you ever thought of maybe turning that into a dance step, trying to market it? <laughs> well, you know, the fellows that I shared my house with at the Commonwealth Games was... Di Costello and Steve Monaghetti and uh, a few of the other distance runners yep. had a big picture up on the fridge afterwards that was in the paper saying um, um, this is something about doing the ruckle buckle or something. So I think they've already created an answer. Oh, really? Step. Well, <laughs> not only them, but us too. We gave it a bit of thought and we came up with this. Oh, great. <laughs> Put a smile on your face. <laughs> As your knees start to buckle and you get right down and do the tiny ruckle. What do you think? Oh, yeah. I think it's a go. I think, uh, you know, maybe um, we should speak to MC Hammer. I might be able to get in the tour. Yeah, I think so. We can't afford the, uh, the backing singers, unfortunately. We might get our whole audience to do that later. Hear the splitting of abdomens from one side of the studio <laughs> to the other. What a horrible thought. Tana, you're actually quite an extraordinary athlete. I mean, you do have trouble finishing races at times. With your first ever race, it was a bit of a disaster, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Look, I, I can't quite remember how I got conned into doing it, but it was back at, in school days, and uh, we all had to partake. You know, I think we had maybe, oh, gosh, 500 kids in the school anyway, so we all had to do something. And somehow I got conned into doing the, the one mile, as it was in, those, in the old days. Yeah. And um, <laughs> I was running along in what I thought was the last lap, you know, ahead of everyone and thinking, oh, this is a cinch, you know, I've run through the finish line, hands in the air, thinking, all oh, right, my first race ever, I've won. And, and then I heard the bell and all my teammates are going, go, go, <laughs> keep running. And I thought, oh, no, you're kidding. So everyone's run past me and I, I kept trotting along and uh, got to the finish line, it just exhausted and, you know, panting and hyperventilating. And then the guys in the ambulance came and gave me oxygen. Oh, really? <laughs> put me in the back of the, up, the ambulance. So that was my, that was my great debut in, in athletics. Yeah, it was, was pretty, wonderful. Pretty impressive, but you've kicked on. You've actually, have you ever got lost, actually, in a, in a marathon race? <laughs> I wondered about that. There might still be marathon runners running still out there somewhere. <laughs> actually, you know, I've got a bumper sticker that says, um, I'm so far behind, I thought I was leading, and I thought <laughs> I might put that on the back of one of my singlets. Well, if the race starts after the one you entered in, you probably are, yeah. <laughs> now, you, ha you have actually finished races and indeed won them. You once won the Manila Marathon and were presented your medal by uh, the late Ferdinand Marcus. What was that like? Well, it, actually, what was going through my mind at the time, because Marcus was there and General Vare was there, and I thought, this is not a good place to be standing. So I thought, you know, I was being presented the medal. I thought, if someone decided to take a pot shot at one of these guys, I'm thinking, I'm right in the line of fire. So it was like, here's the medal. Thanks very much. <laughs> <laughs> Move on. What was he like? Was, it, was he charming or did he look like a man about to be hunted out of his own country? Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> he actually, actually, unfortunately, he was very ill at the time. He was very mm. ill and... Uh, he didn't um, uh, embarrass himself on your shoes or something like that. No, 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 no he didn't. He, uh, Did he say anything like, uh, he said, for God's sake, take some gold out of the country with you and I've got some... <laughs> 
Well, I tried to buy some of Imelda's shoes because I've got a bit of fetish for shoes as well, but she wouldn't have any of it. Oh, well, we've got a bit of foot fetish coming up later in the show, so yes. you'll enjoy that. Like, oh, don't do not, not here, not no. here, not here. <laughs> now, the amazing thing about you is that you, in fact, hated sport when you were at school. Uh, isn't that correct? Loathed it. Yeah. Loathed it. Look, I wouldn't... Oh, I wouldn't. It was everything that any teacher could do to get me to, you know, to get the shorts on and get the gear on and go out and actually take part in physical education. My mum wrote so many notes that I'm sure that, you know, the teachers must have thought I was near to my deathbed because every sort of Tuesday and Friday I'd come down with yes. something or other. That Tani has me. bubonic plague. <laughs> exactly. She today, yes. Why I've did you hate it so much? Oh, look, I just, I don't know. I, I just couldn't stand the thought of getting in those little shorts and all that gear and now you know now yeah. I do it on national television so something's changed yeah you do it for a living why the turnaround what happened oh money no <laughs> no but I you, just, you actually uh, turned it around when you were at school didn't well, you? well yeah I just decided you know I wasn't doing any sport and I really wasn't doing anything I was painfully shy and uh, really really self-conscious a bit like you Andrew yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um it's okay we love you anyways <laughs> and um, Can I have your shoes <laughs> <laughs> and I just thought it just was one day, you know, I was looking in the gym and I saw the girls, they were playing basketball and I thought, you know, they looked like they were having such a great time that it was really something that I, I thought would be fun and I changed my life around, went and joined all the teams in the school, you know, yeah. the basketball, volleyball, all the debating teams and things that would just get me over my shyness because yeah. I thought I've got to confront this fear if I'm ever going to get beyond it. Because I really wasn't enjoying my life at all, being you, so shy. You've actually uh, since gone into schools and uh, taught uh, girls in particular that sport can be a very motivating force, haven't you? Yeah, and, and just going into schools telling them that, you know, um, just take part in it and have fun and enjoy yourself and don't worry, you know, if you come, whatever, if you come last or second or, God, you know, just I have dream of fun. coming last. I mean, <laughs> if there's a place behind last, that's normally where I am. Uh, because, I mean, there's a lot of talk about inequality in sport, women and men, but it's, it's even harder at a school level in some ways, isn't it? Well, it's hard for girls because, uh, you know, they, they've got to, as you say, you know, they've got to get in those little shorts and the guys all, they oogle them and, yeah. you know, sort of, it's... Oogle? It's Did you oogle. say oogle? Yeah. Is that a new sexual technique I haven't heard about? <laughs> haven't you heard of oogling? I've heard of oogling. No, oogling. Sorry, Canadian. I say semi, you say semi, I Let's say potato. Let's call the whole thing off, say, yes, yes. Yeah, yes. right. Yes. So no, oogle, they, they oogle sorry. them. They oogle them. Yeah, oh. eyes pop out of their head. I see. So we have an Australian golfer called Brett Oogle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you learn something every day, don't you? I don't tease you about your accent, Andrew. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. It's good to have a Canadian on the show and learn something about the difficult sport of marathon running. Not that we actually learned anything about how to do it, did we? But we'll talk to you later, Tani. Right now, we'd like to throw to our Melbourne correspondent, who, uh, as coincidence would have it, is in Sydney. Her name is Elle McFeast, and she's talking to that man of many talent. Or a kappa. Warwick Kappa, the prodigal son of the Sydney Swans and an essential tool in the Swans' marketing strategy. He's best known for his prowess in front of goals, but perhaps more significantly for the fit of his football shorts. So, Warwick's back at the SCG. The question still lingers. Exactly how firm are his buttocks? <laughs> Actually, looking, there's no panty line. Nice. What are you doing down there? Oh. Well, I'm just filling every football supporter's dream, really, aren't I? No panty line. You can see the contours of the hamstrings. These are the hamstrings? Very tight. Hard. Very tight, very hard. <laughs> These are called the glutamus maximus. <laughs> is that what it is? Yep. The, and and uh, she, could you just other she, words? Other bottom. words, bottom. Bottom. <laughs> Big don't, don't you dare fart, right? Big round. Lucius <laughs> Maximus. Could you turn around? Hi, Mum. How are you? Turn around. <laughs> no, no. And, come on, let's do some business. <laughs> oh, comparatively speaking. <laughs> Not a good help. <laughs> come on. Um. Well, I was actually interested in buying a pair of jeans. Okay, madam. Not for me, for Andrew Denton. Do you know Andrew at all? Yeah. You do? I've heard of him, yeah. Yeah, well, he's round about your height, your size and everything. Hasn't he got the new sports show coming out? Well, this is what this is. That's the one. Yes. Right, okay. So I thought perhaps if, like, if you showed me, I wanted some sort of stretch jeans. Right, for Andrew? For Andrew. He's, he's pretty much your height and size, actually. So it's, your, it's your lucky day. Thank you. Come down, Sammy. Now... How do they fit? Very How do they actually sit on the body? Well, these ones are um, pretty slim fit. These are from America. 
15 ounce denim, so one of the best jeans you can get. Did they teach you that? I knew, I knew that anyway. <laughs> so if you get to these, yeah. they're going to last five years. What do they look like on? Pretty slim fitting. Do they fit you? They have the contour. Do they fit you? Yeah. <laughs> Could I have a look and see what they look like? Yeah, sure. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Misrepresented in the press? Very much so. Yeah? Like, how? Well, I think I'm doing this, I think I'm doing that, half the time I'm misquoted. Yeah, I think it must be pretty hard because, I mean, you are fairly noticeable just because of the way you look. I mean, you have glam, Warwick, Cappers, pants. <laughs> um, so I thought that, um, Perhaps you felt that people were unfair to you, like when you were at the Bears and stuff. Yeah, um... Are you glad to be back at the Swans? But, yeah, let's just say it didn't work out, and I'm glad to be back among friends. You know, a really interesting thing is that the football clubs are really trying to influence women to get involved in footy. Right. You know, because, like, they're 50% of the population and they need to get more money in. Do you mind being used as a sort of lure for no, women? I don't mind that. No? Part of the job. You reckon? Yeah. Being a sex symbol. Why not? As long as you kick your goals. Yeah. Some, kick goals. Someone's got to do it. What? Being a sex symbol? And kick goals. <laughs> Could you just show Andrew what the jeans will be like? Yeah. Oh, guys. Nice. <laughs> Good. Both Just <laughs> bend over. <laughs> You're a bit big. <laughs> bend over. Oh, well. <laughs> but don't you feel exploited because of your bottom? No, it's all part of the job. You don't feel like a piece of meat? No, maybe there's a bit of, bit of meat in the pants, but... Um, <laughs> but... Thanks, Rory. Thank you. Thank you, Rory. That was all with Pete. I'm Andrew Denton. This is Live and Sweaty, and this is our studio audience, and uh, some of them in football jerseys. Tell me, are you glad to see the football season back? Yes. Why? Oh, Newcastle playing. <laughs> yeah, well, I was looking for a more passionate, poetic reason. How about you? Are you glad to see the football season, mate? I care less. <laughs> Why this apathy? I just know nothing about football and I really couldn't care. Well, I mean, Sorry. aren't you impressed by the, by the musculature of, of these people? The Neanderthal jaws, the necks? The... Well, it's the knuckles dragging on the ground. I see, that's a stereotype and we're trying to dispel stereotypes in this show. I mean, let's get a straw poll here of people. Who's glad that football's back? And who's not glad? Yeah. Well, I think the football winners have it. Actually, there are some football people up the back there. Uh, could you... I can't actually climb through here. Could you just give me a hand getting up uh, up to the back? <laughs> Thanks. Just, we want to talk to some football people here about football. Um, I do all my own stunts here on the ABC. Now, of course, you gave a loud cheer when uh, I asked if you are glad football season's back. What is it about it that appeals to you? Uh, just all the physical attributes of that. Are you a naturally violent man? No, I'm not. Uh, well, well, he's an animal. Come on, this man's an animal, I can tell. He's an animal. Why, in what way is he an animal? He runs in, on field and streaks. <laughs> a football game. Oh, I knew we'd get intellectual in the show sometime or other. Actually, I think we should ask some women because women often have the strongest views on football. Well, I mean, what do you think about football? Um, I like the ads, except I think the ads probably don't do the best thing for Andrew Eddinghausen because I always think Tina Turner's legs look a lot nicer. <laughs> That's true, and she's got much better natural rhythm too. How about you? I love the tight shorts. <laughs> a lot of women say that. But, uh, is this for all forms of football, like soccer and Aussie rules and uh, league and union? Mainly, yes. Anyone, any sport that's got men in it. <laughs> what sports do you play? Uh, tennis and softball. And do you play those with men? Sometimes with um, squash I do. Play. Do you insist on tight shorts? <laughs> that's the first requirement, yes. <laughs> here's someone that knows the sporting one. Let's, let's just leap down here without damaging too many people. And here's a man here that looks fairly butch. He's got a beard. Which... <laughs> 
I mean, we all know that's out of fashion these days, but that's OK. <laughs> Uh, what's your view on the football season? Are you always glad when it's back, or, or do you feel you're going to get bored? Is, is that the one you do with the record? <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of informed and intelligent response we expect from our audience this week and every week on Live and Sweaty. Tell me, uh, do you have a problem with your feet? Not much. Only with your head. Well... <laughs> Here's some tips now on feet. Ah, uh, jogging, yes. There are some keen joggers here in the new executive jogging outfit. G'day, Andrew Denton, ABC Television. How are you? We just jog on the spot here and have a chat. Do you thoroughly recommend these as running shoes to just about anyone? Um, I suppose it's a handle. Yeah. A little bit uncomfortable, but yeah. I'm actually fascinated because nobody I know has leather. Run no, just keep running, leather running shoes. We've still got the push-ups to do, yeah. <laughs> nobody I know has leather running shoes. Why did you choose these over, say, uh, Reebok or Nike or something like that. Oh, they went with the outfit. Oh, really? Well, <laughs> tell me. Oh, uh, now look at this. Blue and brown should never be seen together. <laughs> Why did you choose these shoes, sir? No, it's a uh, New Balance shoe. So it's uh, fairly broad shoes because I have a broad feet. I see. And uh, it's good for running. Are these the only running shoes you have? You look like a bit of a pro to me. <laughs> Yeah, but I haven't run into last year, 15 years. Yeah. I've been in the pair. For 15 years? What? You haven't stopped in all that time? <laughs> You're sweating quite a lot now. Come on, let's just... Sorry. No, no, sorry. I hate to see a grown man sweat. Tell me, what about foot hygiene? Is that important to you? Yes, it yeah. is. Yes. And how do you uh, deal with foot hygiene? Actually, I'm sweating quite a lot. No, no, that's all right. How do you deal with foot hygiene? Uh, well, I wash it <laughs> regularly, so yeah. I don't do anything. In, in anything in particular, acid or...? No, just warm water. Yeah, and soap? Yeah, when I take a bath, until I put soap. Yeah, and, and when you dry your feet, is it individual toes or do you just the whole foot at once? The whole foot at once. It can be quite sensual, though, can't it, rubbing your feet? Yes, it Very, is. very, very yes. sensual. Yes. I just find even talking about washing feet can be very, very sensual. <laughs> very, very <laughs> sensual. <laughs> Do you ever find that feet can be a turn on? <laughs> no, I know. No. <laughs> so we should stop meeting like this. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Oh, pleasure. But I just say they are the spunkiest feet I've seen today. <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye. Right. What a lovely man. A charming, lovely man. He's sent me several of his shoes through the mail since I met him. <laughs> Well, our next guest tonight is one of Australia's most successful television actors. He's also a rock and roll star, and he has such amazing pectorals that they have their own manager. He is Tumby Umby's most upwardly nubile man. Please welcome Craig McLaughlin. Oh, Craig. Craig Tani, Tani Ruckle of Dance Craze fame. Yes, indeed. <laughs> and, uh, I've noticed that. Have you uh, considered doing the Tani Ruckle yourself? It doesn't seem to be a dance step that would easily, that one could easily do. It oh. seems to be something you'd have to train at for a while. Craig, you are a multi-talent. I mean, actually, you are a multi-talent in that there's you and then there's your pectorals, which are talents on their own. <laughs> now, now that people on Australian television have almost seen more of them than, than your face. Is this not so? It's interesting, isn't it? Yes, oh, I think yeah, they're, they're fabulous. They, uh, they, start, they, they get a commission now. Do they? Whenever I work, yeah, they're sort of on 10% each. Each well, boob is on 10%. <laughs> Are we willing to do a whip around to get a quick squeeze of them? Yeah! Just, just check them out there, Craig. Would that be possible? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm currently undergoing a court case with my pectorals because they're actually starting to get more work than I am. Oh, really? So I'm trying yes. to keep them under wraps. But, but I mean, that's sort of a quick oh, thing. Yeah. No! <laughs> Good. What we need here is the slow motion replay so we can get the chalkboard and sort of circle the nipples and things like that. <laughs> now, Craig, you're a very... You didn't go on about mine, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm welcome to... <laughs> Mine. I feel really ugly. No, no, Charlie, no, no. They are fabulous. It was the first Thank thing you. I thought when I met Thank you, but... This might never happen again. Take advantage of it. It might never happen again. <laughs> it's never happened before. I can... <laughs> no, I was... Look, I was just demonstrating that we're non-sexist. Normally, one would get the woman on the show and say, G'day, how are your nipples? But no. <laughs> I thought I'd do it with Craig. Now, Craig, you are one fit-looking dude. Do you work out a lot? Uh, <laughs> I try it. 
Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, every day, basically, really? yeah. Four days, four days. Um... That's not every day, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> you must sleep a hell of a lot. <laughs> you can't expect the guy from Tumbiumbi to be real, real crash hot on no, mathematics. That's true, that's now, true. four days, four days of weights. Yeah. And a couple of days sort of aerobic stuff. There's no use, I mean, there's no use pumping iron, and there's looks, a few guys here looks like they pump a bit of iron. No use pumping iron and not doing anything for the heart because then you'll die, but at least you'll yeah. die muscly. So I'll just... <laughs> I haven't got the heart to tell him to die anyway, but still. Now, Tony, you actually uh, uh, teach aerobics, don't you? Yes, I do. Uh, do you have a, a crazy old love hate relationship with your aerobics teacher? He's a reasonable sort of bloke. Yeah. <laughs> In as much as, no, I wasn't trying to imply anything here. What I meant was that I've, uh... All right then, Craig, if you really want... No, what I meant was that I, I did two or three aerobics classes which were highly embarrassing and I couldn't stand the bastard that was running it. I mean, I... Uh, I... Yeah, I mean, the only thing is, I, <clears throat> I don't know about the fellas here, those of you who have who've tried the classes, but the only embarrassing thing is I... Yeah, I'm not. I'm not overly coordinated when it comes to <laughs> now. No, no, no. Something like that. Yeah, that's fair enough. No, I'm, I'm sort of rhythmical at some things, but just aerobic, <laughs> aerobic classes. You know, like it, get, it does get a bit complicated, doesn't it? And if you feel like your level of fitness is progressing and you want to get into more difficult classes, yeah. well, the dance steps start getting difficult. Pretty and hard. it's like, it's so like, who are some of these guys? Some of them, I'm sure, think they're MC Hammer, and they're out to get down there. <laughs> And it gets a bit confusing, yeah. but as long as you sort of get the old ticker happening. We don't do this at my gym. Well, but that's because you woogle. Yes, well, <laughs> obviously. I mean, do, do you see a lot of uncoordinated dogs such as Craig and myself in the past? <laughs> Thousands. Thousands, really? Thousands of uncoordinated dorks. And yes. how do you stop oh. laughing? I mean... Oh, we don't. Oh, you don't? <laughs> they pay, I reckon they pay that much money, so public ridicule is part of it. Just yeah. like you publicly ridicule me here. No, I, I, I would like no to invite you of... to the gym that I teach at. Yeah, I'll yeah. bet you yeah. would. Yeah. Well, I'm prepared to Why work not? out at your gym. All right. Yeah. Right. Why, Why did I say right. that? God. <laughs> now, Craig, you also yep. pump iron. Did you ever consider being a bodybuilder? It's funny you should mention that. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> I, uh, oh. no. Oh, right. <laughs> but, uh, but you, I mean, you've got biceps which are bursting through this uh, rather cheap second-hand leather jacket. I mean, you're... <laughs> well, right. you actually, no, I'm actually interested. You did a nude scene in Neighbours, right? Which oh, I no, thought... you're not going to show that. No, we're not, we're not going to show that. But... <laughs> no. Oh, no, how about you like that? Well, we'll show you the real thing later, I mean, OK? <laughs> I did a nude scene in Neighbours, but did you work out consciously with the thought in mind that at some point that might happen in your career? No, I actually, uh, some time ago, I, I, um, I, was, I was a really unsporty kid as well. Mm. Not into it at all. I, you know, a bit of cricket at school and that was about it. But mm. basically I spent all my time at home playing guitar, right. thinking I was Jimmy Page or someone. <laughs> I'm still thinking that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me. <him. laughs> If I break into a Zeppelin song, just, just humour me and go along with it. You don't understand what happened, do you? Funny you should mention that. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but uh, no, and it wasn't until sort of uh, the end of high school that I actually got involved. Believe it or not, from someone who didn't do any sport, I got into gymnastics. Yeah. Funny, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, what, like what sex though, was that someone, uh, Craig? Well, she was... Yeah, right. OK. <laughs> At least by dispelling those ugly logos. What I meant to say words. was I, I participated in a little gymnastics. Yes. And, and weight training was part of the, the training regime, the overall training regime. Mm. Now, being a great gymnast, I, I break my foot fairly spectacularly. Yes. <laughs> and it's funny, I came out of like a double somersault thing and landed on my foot and sort of went over and twisted, but I still felt the desire to just stand up and do this, because you know that that's what gymnasts do when yes. they land. They You're come a very stupid that. person, Craig. <laughs> so I just carried the weight training on from that. Can so. you actually still do the double somersault? Funny you should mention that. I, I think I could. Would you like to... Yeah, I'd be very keen to see. Oh no, it's gone. Can you believe that? Oh, what bad luck. Oh, what a shame. Well, we're prepared oh. to stay on air until it cures itself, <laughs> Actually, I did, for I forgot with you, Tony. What we like to do uh, on this show, and normally one collects autographs, but we're interested in collecting celebrity sweat. Um, <laughs> so, Tony, if you could just mop your brow with this, and uh, Craig, if you could uh, mop your brow with this, and then put them back in the association, just autograph. Did you say my brow, there. did you? I did say your brow, not your bra, yes. <laughs> She's a seriously fixated <laughs> woman here. And uh, then if you could just autograph those, that'd be great, because we'll probably. Oh, I didn't. <laughs>
I didn't quite mean uh, Not that. Bad. <laughs> that's good. I'm here to tell you right now, he might look like a sex symbol, but he doesn't smell like one. <laughs> and there's a pen there, if you wouldn't mind autographing that too, because I think what we might do is, is sell this uh, celebrity oh, sweat book. Andrew. Oh my God, there's a behemoth in the studio. <laughs> My good friends from the Hobart Tassie Devils who've just played their semi-final against the Sydney Kings. Now, uh, this is Jason. Jason and Luke and Peter. And you can tell Peter doesn't play, he's got glasses. Yes. <laughs> now, these guys have just played their semi-final against the Sydney Kings in the pre-season comp of the uh, basketball. Now, everybody tipped them to lose, right? Uh, the papers tipped them to lose, the Kings tipped them to lose. They themselves tipped themselves to lose. How'd you go? We lost. <laughs> that you're in the 50 that you said had to lose well that's good i mean that's it we encourage losers on the show everybody's accepted you they feel warm towards you i mean were you uh i mean you said you were going to lose but did you really expect to lose well we, we couldn't come on your show unless we lost we we had watched it and we thought we have to lose before we can come on so oh don't blame us come on it's it's your own bloody incompetence isn't it so so what happened out there tonight what, what went wrong you might have to ask them that question Ooh. I think they had seven, seven guys out there. We only had five, so we're a bit outnumbered. Oh, not that old cry. Come on. You're the assistant manager. You'll know the real reason. Well, I don't think we played hard enough. Simple as that. Would you agree with that? Uh, we got beaten pretty badly, yeah. <laughs> this is too many cliches here. Will somebody admit they were wrong? Do, do you think you didn't play hard enough? That, that could be part of it. It might be the coach as well. Yeah. Oh, good. Controversy. Would you, would you agree that, in fact, your coaching is, well, let's say, shallow, directionless? So... <laughs> Well, I left my uniform at home. That was a problem. Perhaps you should try headbutting their coach. Oh, that's a bit topical, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is, rather. Now, I don't wish to say the obvious here, but you're very tall. <laughs> now, I suppose a lot of people do ask you about your height, but I'm not going to do that. I'd like to ask you about your depth. How deep are you? How deep am I? Yeah. Fairly deep. <laughs> Could you give us a brief example? All the way to the bottom, that's pretty deep. But it's actually very good there are some basketballers here because basketball is one of my favourite sports and I like nothing more than to go around against guys like you. And I'd like you to hang around because we're about to introduce now a very special thing that we call the Brain in a Bucket Challenge. Each week we're going to be inviting someone of note to put aside their intellectual pretensions, put their brain in a bucket and join me in a one-on-one -on -one body on the line sport. And the person I chose this week is Tim Morrissey, a guard for the Sydney Kings and also for the Australian Boomers. And I took him on in a one-on-one -on -one game of basketball. My aim, to whip his white ass. <laughs> right, it's a one-on-one -on -one game, Tim versus me. It's an honour system. If either of us foul, we call a foul. Take two. Good luck, Andrew. I'm going to toss the ball up and uh, whoever gets it gets the shoot first. Come on, Tim Morrissey, Mr. Defending Genius. Come on. Use the camera as a shield. And then, shoot. Yes! Oh. Wow. Foul. Woozy. Wow, Woozy. That's a total Woozy. Obviously, uh, it's one-on-one, -on -one, it's fairly competitive, and we seem to be fairly clearly matched. So, yeah! <laughs> so I think what we'll do now is pick teams. Fair enough, don't you reckon, Tim? Fair enough. So we've got over here uh, John and Steve. I get first pick. <laughs> I'll have Steve. Ah. Woo! Woo! Yeah! Call me back, Steve. Okay, quickly. Okay. Come on. Come on, Ricky. Right, this is what we're going to do. We're going to cheat like buggery, and if they look like they're going to win, we're going to piss off. He touched my arm, Rev. Yes! Oh! 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 O
Oh gosh, 212 all no time. Let's what do you reckon? Let's go with it. Let's go with it. Next week, of course, I'll be challenging New South Wales Premier Nick Greiner to a game on squash. A game of squash. Should be interesting, actually. If I win, I get to be Premier of New South Wales. Now, this, <laughs> this lunatic fiddling with my left ear is Craig Bloxham from Spy vs. Spy. They're about to sing another song, and it's going to be accompanied by me on Silly Cam. Take it away, boys. <laughs>
Five. Five versus five. And, of course, uh, you don't have a new album out, do you? No, and you know what Rex Mossop says? What? There's nothing wrong with a bit of biffo, and the next time you da do that, you're going to get some, Andrew. That's the kind of mindless violence we expect here on Live and Sweaty. <laughs> Let's go to something a bit more civilised now. I'll sort you out later, Sunshine. Karen Ty over at the news desk. That's right. Thanks, Andrew. Hello again. Well, Sydney will meet in the basketball either east side Melbourne or Brisbane in the final of the Australian Basketball Classic at Sydney State Sports Centre. The match at the moment, east side are leading Brisbane 76 to 67, and earlier tonight, Sydney, of course, defeating Hobart 104 to 89. To racing now, and a big day tomorrow at Rose Hill in Sydney with the running of the $2 million Golden Slipper for two year olds. Hot favourite for tomorrow's race is outstanding filly Bold Promise. Unbeaten in five starts, Bold Promise will race from barrier three with Mick Dipman in the saddle. Her main challenge is set to come from Crack Colt Big Dreams and the Clary Connors train Tears. Currently second favourite at five to one, Tears will be ridden by top jockey Shane Dye. A win will give Dye his third consecutive slipper. I think I'm on the right type of horse and to me there's only two chances in the race, Bold Promise and myself. So. I've got a very good chance of winning three on end. And on a sadder note, Australia's first millionaire of the turf, Kingston Town, was put down this morning after failing to recover from a leg injury sustained last December. Highlights of the 14-year-old's career included three successive Cox plates, plus second placing behind Gurners Lane in the 82 Melbourne Cup. Well, it's Rugby Union's annual extravaganza, the Hong Kong Sevens, and ABC Sport will have exclusive coverage Sunday night at 11.40 Eastern Standard Time. Now, if you're not familiar with the seven-a-side format or happen to miss last year's final, here's a taste of what to expect. Oh, look at that! Oh, fantastic! Tavasi! chases! Well, I can't guarantee a try exactly like that this year, but it'll be a sensational play nonetheless. Now, repeating the rugby league score tonight, Penrith 18 drew with Newcastle 18 in the first draw of the season. Now, with all the inside story of round two in rugby league, here's Debbie Spillane. Yes, Karen, and you know, the brilliant thing about round two is that it provides more top-of-the-table clashes than any other round. We've had one tonight, and we back up tomorrow with the ABC Saturday Super League, Saints at home to Brisbane. No doubt the Broncos can win. Question is, can Bubbly Bennett's boys rack up more points than interchanges? Here's one for the trivia buffs. How long since Norths and Wests have fought out a top-of-the-table battle? Well, bless the little blue moon above, it's happening on Sunday. Warren Ryan's complaining about the interchange but that won't stop him taking full advantage of it and he's got just the man to use. Ronnie Gibbs pioneered the unlimited replacement rule and should find it even easier now that he doesn't have to hold his head and limp every time he leaves the field. Wests by a whisker. <laughs> Poor old Channel 10 can't take a trick. They've got a lemon as the match of the round. Two first round losers, Canberra and Parramatta. You've got to go for the Premiers. Sturlow's out and what's a one man team without the one man? Canterbury, Balmain and the Gold Coast should also have wins and Illawarra will be too good for Souths. Although, I'm predicting another mega match from the man Andrew Denton has nominated the season's bargain recruit Sandy Campbell back to you Karen <laughs> thank you Debbie now in the AFL game tonight between Adelaide and Hawthorne just a few minutes to go and Adelaide are leading the Hawks by 70 points 19 10 to 7 12 so a bit of a hiding there but now we cross to El McFeast in Melbourne with all the big news from the AFL <laughs> This is not chances. We're actually live here at the Footscray Football Club in Melbourne. The guys have just come off the training track, getting ready for Sunday's big clash against ruling AFL premiers Collingwood. It's going to be a big match. They look pretty damn excited about it. No worries, <laughs> donkey. Other matches this weekend, West Coast on Sunday at home to Melbourne and St Kilda take on Richmond tomorrow at the park. That leaves seven teams with a bye this weekend. And if you're wondering how to work the ladder out, it's pretty darn simple. You take your premiership points, multiply it by 25, and then divide it all by the number of games played. Or for those of you more into muscles, the maths, that's wins over games played by 100 equals your position on the ladder. And if you can get that, you're a better man than I am. El McFeast for Love and Sweaty here in Melbourne. Take it away, Robbo. <laughs> Some people are lucky, aren't they? Well, thank you, El. See you same time next week. And now it's back to Andrew. 
Uh, thank you. Oh, by the way, if anyone was wondering, uh, one set of buttocks there were Craig McLaughlin's. <laughs> well, I mentioned earlier that losing is a key component of sport, and there's one group of people that know more about that than just about anyone. They're the North Sydney Rugby League team, Sydney's losingest outfit. They last won the Premiership back in 1922. That was just after electricity was invented, before Kuwait had been invented, and when Frank Sinatra was just 50. That's how long ago it was. <laughs> Is it possible they'll turn it all around in 1991? Well, we've decided to follow Norse throughout the season and see how they go. And our decision has nothing to do with the fact that David Hill is the chairman of the North Sydney Rugby League Club. Here now is a preview of what we confidently fear will be some Logie Award-winning television. Coming soon to ABC TV, a savage tale of power, lust and liniment. Norths, the mini-series. All their lives they'd been losers. Now all that was about to change. He was the coach who didn't know the meaning of the word lose. He was the star import who also didn't know the meaning of the word lose. And he was the chairman, a ruthless power broker who knew the meaning of the word lose but wasn't quite sure how to spell it. Together, they are Norths, a towering saga of love, leather and losing. Stay tuned for that one, and I think Craig's Petrels will also be making an appearance in that show. Well, now is a very special part of Live and Sweaty. It's the return of a legendary television institution, Controversy Corner. And we're very pleased and privileged to have tonight the man who founded Controversy Corner, a man whose middle name is Macho, whose motto is, do unto others as you would expect them to do unto you, who likes his men hard, his women soft, and never the other way around. Will you please welcome <laughs> Rex Mossop. Rex, you are a well-known victim of a testosterone overdose. Can you spell that? <laughs> you are a man's man, is that not true? I would say that probably is correct, yes. Mm. Yeah. Can you therefore explain this photo, Rex? <laughs> oh. Now, Rex, it's not me. <laughs> all it is, you Rex. <laughs> was this a troubled time in your life, Rex, when perhaps things weren't as clear to you then as they are now? Well, it has all become clear to me since that time. I went through a phase there. I wasn't quite sure what I was. I worked out that I looked so ugly there that I was better as a bloke. It's a matter of conjecture, I expect, Rex. <laughs> I think uh, we'll be releasing that to the press of the world tomorrow. Oh, why not? Yes. I would, yeah. Yes, now, Rex, you uh, actually, as I said, invented Controversy Corner. Mm. Could you explain to our panellists here how it should go, what the rules are? Well, there are no rules at all. We just get a topic and all yap at it. That's the way it goes. <laughs> I mean, there's Ferris Ashton, there's Noel Kelly, there's uh, Alan Clarkson, and whoever else on the other, on the other side here. That's the way it goes. God, Channel 10 will write his eyesight is bad. <laughs> well, OK, let's introduce the panel, actually. And, of course, we have Rex immediately to my right. And on his right, Craig the Petrels McLaughlin. <laughs> and on his right, Karen Young Nugget Ty. Welcome. <laughs> to my left, Debbie, I nearly called you Karen. Debbie, Skull of Rust Belaine. <laughs> Tani, do the ruckle ruckle. <laughs> and a new panellist, will you please welcome Lex, the Swine Marinos. <laughs> now, there's only one rule here, forget politeness. And, and Rex, the subject is of your choosing, and it is to put it in your words. Aussie rules is a pain in the ass pussy's game. Would you care to explain that? <laughs> That's enough of the booze out there. That's enough of the booze. Let's get out of some business here. <laughs> rugby league is the game to play. Rugby union if you can't afford it. <laughs> rugby league is the game to play. It's a man's game. It's got contact, it's got pace, it's got everything. The VFL game is a game based on a misnomer. It, there's no rules in the game. They uh, applaud the business when the ball is loose and everybody knocks the ball forward. It's a, it's a bullshit game. Bullshit game. <laughs> Second. I think there's an argument to be put against that, Debbie. Well, as you know, Rex, I'm a very keen rugby league supporter, but I think it's people like you who try to make the most of differences that have led us into a couple of world wars, and I'm sure if you had your way, we'd have a third world war starting as soon as you could possibly arrange it. Um, no, I... Oh, she's right, Rex. That's the sort of philosophy. That's the sort of philosophy that took our young men to go And how did you come back, eh? I don't need your help. I'm doing all right. I'm winning. Well, I think I'm just trying to sort the man out. 
Lex, you can shut up for a bit. Lex. This is uh, I will all respect to Mr. Mossop. Why? Well, why not? <laughs> this why? is the sort of argument that's been going on for years. It's the sort of argument that people who, you know, if they take their flu oh, tablet with coffee, they start to hallucinate. <laughs> Basically, there's two sorts of footballers. There's those who can run, catch a ball and kick it all in the one movement. Yeah. There's those who can't. The ones who can play Aussie rules, the ones who can't play rugby league. <laughs> Well, Craig, uh, Craig, uh, you're well, a it's interesting. I, I, I take Lex's point, but listening oh, to Lex, no, I've also got to, no, I've also got to go with Rex. I don't need my point. No, Lex, <laughs> both Lex and Rex. Rex and Lex. <laughs> both. Sounds like a player's word. No. The class. <laughs> but the thing is, I, I Rex's point about <laughs> sorry, Rex. I, I <laughs> can I, you be less specific here? Yeah. <laughs> I really, I really can't tolerate loose balls. <laughs> That's an answer that's really brought me up. Why? Why, Rex? Why could you play rugby union and say you can't tolerate loose balls? I mean, if ever there was a lot of fumbling and falling and well, I generally gra gravitated around. from rugby union to rugby league, in which the handling is. Well, you didn't like loose balls. Well, I yeah. didn't like loose balls, but and you didn't like to have a ruck. Nothing <laughs> <laughs> wrong with a good ruck. Are you seriously? Are you seriously the denying Rex? Words of <laughs> Rex, please, please listen to me. Rex, are you seriously denying that Aussie rules doesn't involve body contact and courage and extreme no. physical violence, things of which you favour? It does a little bit, but not often. And it's not based on it. it's based on the error factor. The ball is loose. They continually knock the ball along the ground. And what about the bloody marks? The Rex, marks they're supposed Rex, to take. Just a Rex. moment. Just a moment. Well, what about the mark? Rex. The guy goes up for the ball. It touches his hands, and they give him the mark. He's got in our game. You've got to hold the football. Can I just it's point out? Hold it. Can I just point out here that Rex, your entire broadcasting crew is based on error factor. I mean, what is the problem here, Karen? I'd like to ask Rex a question. Yes, yes. What, what, would your, what would the tune you'd be singing now if you had lived all your life in a state like Victoria or, or South Australia? I don't have Australia? any money, of course. <laughs> oh. I can't believe I could ever do anything as bad as that. Oh. Oh, you don't really? think if you'd grown up that perhaps you might have become a great Aussie rules player? No, somebody would have got to me and told me that there was another game played north of the border. I believe the only good thing that ever came out of Victoria was the Hume Highway. <laughs> Victoria, no one ever tells you there's another game north of the border, so you're wrong there yeah. for a start. But for Keith Miller, Ambrose Palmer, who was they Johnny Famishan's coach. They gravitated coach. to the north, didn't they? Yeah, but they played Aussie rules. You're calling them pussies? Is, is that this what, what you're, you're trying saying? to say? Oh, then. What about Simon? <laughs> Simon O'Donnell played Aussie rules football. I mean, there's a lot of very well known, very yeah, macho, how many, how many very respected. Division footballers are they? Look, I've never talked about VFL players. I've talked about the rules. The, the rules are wrong. The game is a bullshit oh, game. Well, how would you change it? Well, I'd ha they'd have to handle the ball correctly. They'd have to take marks and catch the football and not. Oh, and not oh, oh, I watch the bloody. I watch the BFL just as bad as I watch the BFL. Oh, they do. They just do. Oh, they 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 do. Oh, in the first 30 seconds of the match. Platten was concussed. DPA Dominico played with a, a punctured lung. So on, what are you so saying, on, that they're so not like this? Keeping pretty quiet, keeping, oh, oh, keeping your breast to yourself as usual. <laughs> now, what do you say about all this? Well, I don't know about much about loose balls and rucks and all this, but it sounds fascinating. I think I might give up marathon running and go to the well, place. Listen, you're a judge of fitness and aerobics yeah. and well, stamina. I mean, you've obviously seen both codes. I mean, they both obviously involve a lot of athletic ability, a lot of fitness, a lot of stamina. I challenge them to run a marathon. I reckon we're yeah, fitter than all of them. Yeah. Yeah. Let possibly me make the point. The point I'm making right from the word go yeah. is that VFL players would make very good rugby league or rugby union players. Unfortunately, they play a game that it's localised in, in four states in Australia. It's got nowhere to go. It's not an international game. 
they go over and play in Ireland once or twice a year at the end of their football season and they play a game called hurling over there and it's it's just bullshit. There's nowhere for the game to go. Well, we've well, only, we haven't exactly got a wealth of overseas countries. No, like that's like not true, Dave. Rugby, rugby union, league. Rugby union in 52 countries. Oh, yeah. 52. Seriously, in about 52 countries. <laughs> rugby league goes to New Guinea, England, New Zealand, New, New Guinea, Zealand. England, New Zealand, France, France. and France. France. Oh, Japan, come on, Rand. Japan! Come on, Rand. Impossible! <laughs> Karen, please, can we talk some sense to this man? I mean, it's crazy to Why suggest that. Why does a sport that... need to be international to be a good sport? Yeah. Oh, I come mean, on. It's got to have what, somewhere for the players to go. Is, something to do. Sports <laughs> sports <laughs> sports <laughs> sports I don't want them to tour and wreck hotels. They've yeah. got to have an excuse. What are you talking about? <laughs> what are you talking about? Don't tell me the oh. AFL lads don't play when they go away on an overseas tour. They may or they may not, but that proves it's a bona fide sport. Look, I think the point <laughs> that we've established here, Rex, is that you are a fossil. Yeah. Rex, you, you are a young man and an old man in a young man's well, you're world. Not you're an embarrassment. Andrew, you're Andrew. sexist. Andrew. You're violent. Andrew. It's an anachronism. This man is a. It's been an enormous pleasure to have Mr. Mossop on the show. Rex, you're welcome back any time and I'll see you in the High Court in about four months. <laughs> Will you please thank all our panellists tonight? <laughs> we'll be back next week with Mick Greiner, Peter Roback, Simon Madden and the cutting edge of contemporary music, Mick Fleetwood. In the meantime, good night and I love you all. <laughs> It's more inspired nonsense England from French and Saunders. Princess Ferguson was photographed leaving Buckingham Palace late last night with her face on the wrong way up. <laughs> they have a whole new bunch of tricks for us, especially when it comes to the arts. The greatest army in ballet is, of course, to have a pudding named after you. And when Dawn and Jennifer take a look at television, nobody's safe. Don't miss Britain's newest comedy sensation. Feel like a little French and Saunders? 9.30 Monday on ABC.